Good afternoon. Thank you for coming to this session. My name is Larry Cravalo. I'm filling in for Diane Mueller, another speaker, but I'm going to just introduce Vinotini Raju, uh, who is the women, winner of the Women B2B Tech Award last year, and she's going to present a fantastic slide deck and a demo on Gen AI in operations. So with that, Vino is going to introduce herself and introduce the slides and the concept. And I'm sure you're going to go from out from here with a lot of good information on how to use Gen AI in operations. You know, up to you. Thank you so much, Larry, uh, for a great introduction. Hello, everyone. Very good afternoon. Looks like we have a full room here. I'm so excited to see you all, and I'll try my best to keep up to the expectations. So what are we going to talk today? Um, Gen AI, wow, that's a happening thing now. And we, we are all in the Kubernetes space, and I'm trying to put these two technologies together. So I'm going to be talking about using Gen AI to instigate precision and efficiency in Kubernetes operations. That's a pretty loaded topic. So what I have done is um, you know, created a short agenda to give you a heads up on what I'll be covering um, over the next 20 minutes. So I'll do a short introduction to the Kubernetes uh, landscape and the Gen AI, and talk about some of the challenges and the solutions that are available today. And I'm gonna propose an AI governance framework uh, for IT uh, operations. And I'll walk you through a, a, you know, a troubleshooting use case with a simple uh, you know, Kubernetes issue, and then uh, show you a sh complete solution demo of how this whole thing will fit in, followed by a quick um, Q&A. So just a, a quick word about who we are. So we are a low-code uh, platform company uh, we are building an ID for Kubernetes, making things simpler for um, Kubernetes users. Uh, we are headquartered in Bangalore, but I, I live in Canada, and um, we have a distributed team. We started off as a DevOps consulting firm offering CI-CD automation for uh, retail customers across India and US. And we also parallelly contributed and um, maintained this project called Configurator, which um, helps you version control uh, config maps and secrets on Kubernetes. So since 2017, we are all platform company, and we are on different marketplaces, thanks to all our partners. So we have about 1,600 plus downloads across all these uh, marketplace uh, distributions. Let's dive in. Um, AI for Kubernetes, what's the necessity and how AI can help? So this is a slightly an outdated survey that was conducted by CNCF in 2022. Um, but yeah, the problem still remains, right? The training is one of the strongest inhibitors for the Kubernetes adoption. And even if we are on Kubernetes, uh, still, still troubleshooting and maintaining is really complex. Upskilling is uh, difficult. But at the same time, we are seeing a huge explosion of AI solutions, and we are readily able to see the value that it brings to table. So it's a great opportunity for us to put these two things together and find the value immediately. So we did a short survey last year um, across the globe. Uh, a lot of uh, platform engineering folks uh, participated in this, DevOps uh, engineers participated in this, and we got about 48 responses. Uh, to see where AI can contribute in uh, solving Kubernetes issues. So we can clearly make out like validating configurations, troubleshooting failures, monitoring and detecting anomalies, and then detecting security issues are four main areas where we saw like AI can add a value. But then what is preventing us from doing that? So before getting into that, I really want to know how many of you are really evaluating AI in their operations? Okay, so how many of you are having challenges in your organizations due to compliance issues? Okay. Oh, 
okay, so is Gen AI really suitable for uh, IT operations? That's a big question. I came across this uh, very interesting quote uh, from Santosh Bimpala, a computer science professor from Georgia Tech. It says a language model is just a probabilistic model of the world. So it's not deterministic. So which means it hallucinates. It can give you false positives. Um, and it's not real time, so we may not be able to get all the real time information that is available out there. And we cannot make decisions based off what the AI responds because um, there is a lack of, lack, lack of accountability. We need a constant supervision of what happens with the AI and how we consume it. The first part of the problem I think we can very well address uh, through some, some of the things that we can um, outright control. For instance, the prompt engineering, the models that we choose or build, the temperatures which actually decide how creative uh, AI can become. So these attributes, to an extent, we have a better control. And we can implement something called the uh, retrieval augmented generation called RAG, and uh, have SERP APIs which can search Google and then give you real-time data. By creating a pipeline with these technologies, we can have some real-time and domain-specific uh, information as well. So I'll walk you through this RAG in a while, uh, but then, yeah, this problem to an extent can be solved. So the, most of the times we talk about the hallucination and getting the real-time data, but often we miss out on the last problem, which is very critical for operations, which is the lack of accountability. So we need a strong AI governance if we have to consume AI within our IT operations. We cannot just let AI make the decisions for us. So for instance, like let's go over each one of these uh, problems, and I'm going to give you a very simple example. I could have chosen Kubernetes issues, but here I, I'll do that a little later. I want to show pictorially you know, what it signifies. For instance, I have used ChatGPT to create a flowchart, and it, it gave me some random image. Then I changed the prompt to create a line diagram, and it's able to show something you know, uh, different, but it's still not um, you know, uh, to the expectations. So the last one is I changed, the, again, the prompt with a little more context of what I really expect out of AI. And this time, it had some meaningful outcome. Let's compare this with Llama 2 7b. And you see, across all these, it was not able to generate anything that is meaningful. But then, when, when we have a fine-tuned Llama 2, along with the proper template, we were able to get a better response. So what this signifies is that we need a good prompt. We need a fine-tuned model, which is very domain-specific. So here I'm proposing, OK, we have seen the model and the prompt. Now let's move on to the, you know, the governance. And I'm proposing a governance for AI where you know, it gives a certain level of comfort uh, for us to consume it in our operations. In Kubernetes landscape, we have so many tools, third-party tools, and we have to collect the context across these tools in order to put, for, uh, for, put forth a meaningful you know, prompt. So there is a cognitive overload uh, in generating those contexts. The second aspect of is before we share anything with the AI, we'll have to redact the sensitive information. And then I haven't come across so many of the uh, solutions where you know, the user gets to review and approve anything that goes to the uh, AI. So we need this. This is a very important uh, step. So we have a better control of what happens and what we actually send to the AI. And once we get the response from the AI, um, we have to tag those responses to say this is uh, generated by AI, and we need to use it with discretion. The final step is to maintain a complete history of all the uh, responses and the inputs. So we can go and do an audit at a later point in time, uh, if at all we have to. Uh, look at things. All right, so I think we have summarized, to summarize what we have seen, we have seen the prompt, we have seen the uh, models, we have seen the workflow or the governance. Now I'm going to do a simple use case of how do we go about troubleshooting an issue in the Kubernetes 
and how the AI solution can help. So here I have um, a simple resource, which is a, a Java application deployed as a pod. And um, it actually uh, has a, a command to run app.jar, which is actually not present in the image. And uh, there is a volume mount that mounts that uh, jar file into the container. Since the jar file is not there, um, the container doesn't start, and it has unable to access the jar file. So I'm going to propose a RAG pipeline architecture where we will be able to solve this you know, troubleshooting issue. So I have built a data set from different Kubernetes sources, scraped the data, fed it into the uh, Pinecone DB, and then I'm using a Llama 2 7B base model. I used Retriever QA and a prompt template specifically built for troubleshooting. And whatever we get out of this RAG pipeline, I'm uh, do, uh, doing a chaining of the prompt and sending it to uh, the representation layer, which is mostly for the UX. So I have not included the, uh, the workflow here. I'll show it as a complete solution later on. Uh, but then I want to show you the difference uh, of using a plain base model versus the rack pipeline. So this is what uh, Llama 2 responded. It came up with three solutions. Check the container has enough memory, which is nothing uh, related to the problem. Verify that Java command is currently uh, configured. Again, it's not related. Then check the class path. Yes, that could actually uh, contribute to the problem. And then uh, you know check the network issues and things like that. But most of it is incorrect because it's not a fine-tuned model. Um, but if I have to fine-tune or build a model of my own, then it takes a lot of effort. So RAG simplifies that. You can just collect the sources, build a, uh, you know, a data set, and then you can have this uh, really quick. This is what we uh, got from a Llama to 7B along with the RAG pipeline. So all these three scenarios fit in very well with the problem that we have in hand. The first one, it says missing or incorrect file path. Then we have an incorrect jar format, so it could be corrupt. And you may have an insufficient um, permissions or access control issues because we are doing a volume mount. Now, this is quite promising, and this is exactly what we should you know, count upon. Now, let's see how IDE, low-code IDE can actually work with AI and have a complete solution on you know, the troubleshooting. Low-code actually bring, can bring in some advantages. So for instance, you can have a templated workflow. Um, you, can, you can actually have all this context integrations with third-party tools that you can pull in readily and have a context uh, available for the AI. It can have an efficient uh, prompt template. And the benefit we get out of that is a quick issue resolution. We can build a context-aware knowledge base, which I'm going to show you in a while. And then you can also have automation around support ticketing and other stuff. So you see here on the left-hand side, I have a catalog of uh, different, uh, you know, the context. So for instance, the resource specification, uh, events, logs, metrics, and so on and so forth. And then we can feed that back into the uh, chatbot. And whatever outcome that we get, we can capture that in the form of documents. Uh, so the runbook docs are essentially context-aware documentation that goes side by side with your Kubernetes resource. So it's very handy, and then you can pull in that information really quick. And then you can also have a Jira ticket. You can direct that to a Jira ticket and have some automation around that. OK, so I'm going to show you a demo of what I have described so far. Um, I have a recorded demo, as I couldn't show you a live demo. Um, just give me a moment. Uh, I'm sorry if the resolution is not good enough, but I, I think it should be fine. Okay, so the I want to first walk you through the ID itself uh, because that forms the foundation for bringing in the context. So this is a, an ID where you can filter resources, have a live view of all the resources. You can have consoles. You can have the logs. You can have multiple uh, logs open. You can edit the YAMLs and then maintain... You can also have a, you know, a schema form, which is a low-code uh, editor with 
side-by-side -side documentation of modifying your resources. So let's talk about the AI here. Um, I have two uh, AI assistants uh, registered. I have a chat GPT and a Llama Langchain. And I have a code repository which has one runbook in it, runbook hub, basically. It's nothing but um, a repo with the .gp YAML file with the specification of different selectors and uh, what documentation goes with that. So any resource that matches this selector will get tagged with this document. So you can also build this from uh, the solution UI, or you can have this YAML file. Um, you can build it uh, from scratch. So I have two uh, run books within this hub. So let's take a look at it in the UI later. So I also have on Jira account. Now you can see that the run book hub has two documents, two, I mean, two uh, run books in this hub, and it's attached to this cluster. And in the pod pending, it gets attached to anything um, that is of a particular uh, label. So this documentation is generated by AI. So we have a disclaimer at the bottom of this. Whenever a new content is modified or generated by AI, we have a disclaimer saying that this is generated by AI, use it with caution. So we have tagged this. Let's go back to the uh, cluster and see how the resources get tagged. So I can view the resources, and I can filter them based on the runbooks. So I have one uh, image failure container which gets tagged here, and you have a side-by-side -side documentation to see um, what could go wrong. So you can use all the contexts that are available on the left-hand side to pull in the information and then enhance this even more. Sorry. OK, let's see. Um, as another use case, the Java issue that I talked about. So I have the uh, de uh, application deployed in this cluster. Let's um, filter that resource and then see how we can go about troubleshooting. So I filter based on the pod, and I fetch the pod called Java failing or something, yeah. OK, so let's uh, open the chat UI. and. Uh, the redact is on by default, so anything that we add into the context, we are going to redact it. So I'll, uh, you have a catalog of all the um, logs and metrics that you can pull in. So I'm going to add uh, the resource specification. And you can see that it's all redacted. You can review and you can up approve uh, later, on, later on. So it's all redacted. I approve it. and then. I add the container logs as well. And I'm going to approve that as well. And then we can add events, metrics. So I'm going to just show you um, how the metrics would look like uh, when you add it. So I'm adding an event, and I'm adding a Prometheus uh, a metric. I know it's not related, but just to show you like it's possible to bring in the metrics um, into this. So yeah, it's not a related issue as such, but you can bring in anything. Yeah, so you get a graphical view of all the metrics that are there. And then we can do troubleshooting. So I'm using ChatGPT, and you should be able to get the troubleshooting tips from ChatGPT. So we have an inbuilt template for the prompt. So this is what we see, right? So it gives you a consolidated uh, list of things that could go wrong, along with the expected versus the actual values. So it's able to clearly pinpoint the issues. Uh, this, uh, ex you know, the expected is that it's expecting the jar there. It's not present with a list of commands. And it also gives you a flowchart of how the whole uh, steps can be executed. Right? Um, so this is with ChatGPT. It did not get confused, even if I give, uh, add a lot of noise to the uh, context. Um, and then you can see the list of options that are possible from this chat. So you can create a Jira ticket uh, right from here based on the uh, content it generated. And then you can also create run books uh, from here. So it created a Jira ticket with all the context in the form of an attachment to the Jira ticket. So it's pretty much automated. And then you, you can also create a run book from here.
Yeah, so you would see some random name. Uh, that's because I confused the chat GPT with the uh, Prometheus alerts. Otherwise, it would have given me a much more meaningful title. Um, yeah, so let's see how. So you also see a list of history of all the chat that we had. So we can use it for auditability later on. So let's move on to uh, the Llama output, like Llama integration that we have, and see how it performs here. So I have the same. Uh, Java failing pod, and I'm going to use the Llama chat. I'm going to add just the specification and the logs. So I'm adding the specification, and I'm adding the log as well. And then we do a troubleshoot. So it's just the same example that I showed, but with a better representation. So all these four causes, three causes that it showed, along with the list of uh, the workflow. So it could fail for path reasons, jar format, or volume mounts. And it gives you a neat representation of how you can go about solving this problem. Now, this is the end of the demo. And I hope you liked it. Let's get back. Oh, yeah, thank you. Wow. Thank you so much. OK, so I'm going to just summarize what we have spoken so far. Um, so we have seen the AI challenges. We have seen the prompt. A model in governance can make a huge difference. Um, I showed you an example of uh, hybrid fine tuning uh, with uh, RAG and how low code and AI can go hand in hand in troubleshooting issues. So I'm going to stop here uh, for Q&A. But before that, um, we have a SaaS version. I'm just announcing the SaaS release of it. Um, if you are interested, you can go subscribe. Uh, it for, at, at a you know very basic level, you don't have to you know there is no uh, payment or anything. You can just go try this online. Um, it's available as uh, if you go to the website, you have a start free trial, and then you can go and sign up, and you will be able to use ChatGPT um, for your own cluster for one cluster. Uh, but if you are looking for anything uh, on premise. Uh, this uh, version is still not available on our marketplaces, uh, which we'll be releasing very soon. But we do have an early access. Um, you can get in touch with us, and we'll give you uh, the light or the community edition with some enterprise capabilities, too. But it's, again, going to be on ChatGPT. Um, if you want an enterprise edition, you let us know, and then we can work together on the Llama version. Uh, and if you have a rack pipeline in-house, uh, we can also integrate with that. You can find me on um, Twitter at Vinothani Raju, and I have kept my DMs open. If you want to contact me, you can DM me. And if you liked this, please uh, uh, use this tag uh, in, and tweet about the solution, and that's going to be a good encouragement for us. Um, if, if any of you are watching this live video and you couldn't make it to the event in person, uh, please do share your feedback um, as a YouTube video. I mean, you can send in your comments, and then we will take a look at those uh, comments as well. All right. So I'm done with the presentation. I mean, we'll open up for the Q&A and. Yeah. Is there any questions? Yeah, go ahead. This yeah, I think right Dari here. can. Thank, yeah. Uh, thank you very much for the wonderful presentation. So the model it generates or corrects, does it actually improves it and stores it, the improved model somewhere? OK, so I have not done a fine tuning of the uh, model. Um, I have done a, a RAG pipeline. Let me go back to that slide. OK, yeah, so here I'm just scraping the data. I have a data set in uh, Hugging Face. Um, and then I use the base model for integrating with the vector, vector DB. But we can do a fine tuning, which is, again, we are working on it. Uh, you can still have a fine tuned version. Either you can have it in the, um, you know, hugging phase, or you can have it uh, locally as well. Yeah. And my next question is... Hello. Yeah. So the code, the low code it generates, can you actually view that and improve upon that? Um, you mean the response? Not the response, because uh, the whole UI or it, it's behind the scene is generating some code. 
Um, okay, the templates code, you mean? Yeah, yeah the template. templates right now we are providing a template ourselves, but in the chat it's not limited to just the troubleshooting or the optimization. You can give it. You can also have a, f a free form, which means you can send your own um, you know content to it. But at this moment we don't have a template option where you can create a template and use it for your chats. Um, that's something that we will have it in a like in a few releases. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, one more question back there. Thanks a lot for the presentation. Uh, in your example, you show that uh, you solve it using the AI a problem that is, uh, let me say, related to something uh, very general because it's referred to a missing file. Uh, if someone wants to uh, enrich more the model you used, it, for example, for his own purpose, for his own particular application, is there any chance to inject a custom model or a custom enriching reg pipeline to identify some problems also in a custom application? Yeah, uh, that's a great question. In fact, like uh, we have looked up on uh, some of the existing models and we did not come across any model that is fine-tuned for this. And even if it did, it did not really work for us. I mean, it was, the answers were not really accurate. But uh, you know, we are kind of uh, looking into fine-tuning it. We are not building a model of our own. We are looking to fine-tune it. Um, but however, like if you have your own models, um, you can bring in, I mean, in case of our enterprise version, you can have your own models and we can do the integration with that. Yeah. Thank you for the presentation. Um, who do you imagine is the target audience for such a tool? Um, is it support? engineers or developers or users or the operators themselves? Yeah, I think our primary audience is uh, the IT operations. Uh, but then, you know, as DevOps stands, DevOps is for everyone. Uh, we have the IDE for like the low code and all those, I mean, even developers can use. But our primary audience here is the IT and uh, SRE folks. Uh, thank you for the presentation. During your demo, you needed to type in a proof command several times. Can you clarify what was the purpose of it? Like, is it some security and compliance reason? Yeah, so as I said, like, we don't want AI to decide things for us. We need to have a better control of how we are interacting with the AI. So unless we review and approve the content, or even the solution doesn't want to assume that just because we have redacted we are okay to you know, send it across to the AI. We don't want to automate that. We want to make sure that you know, the users are in control of what they really send it to the AI. So unless they review and approve, uh, especially because it's, it's actually happening in your environment, we want to make sure that we are not sending anything that is uh, um, you know, sensitive. Hi, thank you so much for this talk. I uh, learned a lot. And one thing I missed in the presentation, which you probably covered if you could review again, is when the tagging of resources happen. Um, is it in a pipeline or does it automated happen or is it a human tag? I saw the tagging and I thought, that's amazing. I wish I could do it in an automated fashion because my humans don't want to do it. <laughs> okay, so yeah, we do an automatic tagging. Because we don't, uh, yeah, sometimes, you know, developers can forget and uh, it can go uh, oversight. It can be an oversight. So we want to make sure that that's automatically tagged. In case of a chat, anyway, we know that that's coming from the AI. But in case of run books, uh, we, as soon as somebody uses the uh, AI enhancement, we automatically tag it. Hello, thank you for, for your presentation. Yeah. I would like to ask if it's possible to, to bring it to the next level, like for, for example, you know, to create some, to have some templates and maybe some custom models defined and then based on this one, as soon as we run the pipeline to create some alerts. Because I mean, if you are talking about thousands of clusters or whatever, nobody will just, you know, in a manual way, check the UI. Is it possible also to integrate the outcome with some uh, observability tools? Um, that's a, a great question. Um, 
But I'm, uh, we have the APIs, so it's, certainly it is possible. The reason why we have a, a approval process is to make sure that we are not letting anything that goes out of the control. I mean, from a technical point of view, it is certainly possible. But is that something that we want to do? Um, again, it depends upon uh, organizations if they are fine. I mean, uh, we can review what kind of a content we want to send. Uh, if it doesn't have, if we are 100% sure there is nothing sensitive, we, everything gets redacted, we can still do that. There. Hello. Hello. Right there. Yeah. Yeah. Here. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, thank you for the presentation. And I have a question um, about the performance of your product when you're dealing with uh, exotic or uh, custom resources, private custom resources. Does your tool handle this well or do we need to retrain the model using our private resources? Yeah, that's again a great question. So we have played around, played around with 7B, 13B, and we felt 7B was uh, better, um, but then it was not yielding the results. We had to change the temperatures that we did. We brought in the uh, data sources, and then we realized we have to add a lot more to it. And that's where, you know, to answer the other question as well. So how much ever we train, even if it is accurate to an extent, uh, we are not letting the AI make the decision in the operations. This is, you can always look at this as a guidance, um, an assistant who, which is actually helping you. Another thing which we also realized is that when we give a noisy input, like if we have a huge prompt, um, if, especially, you know, if it is a system resource, it has all the status, manage fields, and so many, um, you know, uh, attributes. If we dump all the uh, inputs to the uh, AI, it was not performing well. So we have to fine-tune uh, the prompts itself, right? So I think from our observation, if, if you have an internal database and uh, of all this tr knowledge base, and you, you can actually create a fine-tuned model, which will also improve the performance of the, um, the rack pipeline or um, anything, yeah. So, but we have our own base version, which will work, um, which we have tested for uh, system resources. But if you have a pipeline, we can do the integration. Yeah, thanks for the, pre the presentation and the slides. Yeah. The demo, of course. Um, you are feeding basically the model with all these data points, approving them, but how do you know which data points to feed it? Where, how would the SRE platform engineer know that something's wrong, where it's wrong, and what to feed the model with to actually get to the problem at hand? Yeah, so um, again, we have a few data points to start with, but we can always ask the AI model, what is the additional information that we are looking for, right? So it can give back the suggestions and you can pick those from the catalog. Yeah, but how do you know what's wrong? How are you alerted actually that something's wrong that you start needing to uh, feed that information to the AI? Yeah, so, so we need there, to have I'm, a starting I'm point. Missing, I'm, yeah. I'm missing the starting part of the journey to actually bring the value to the engineer. So the starting point is where you're starting to see the uh, errors happening. So for instance, in this case, we uh, start starting. You're not an observability tool, basically. We are not an observability tool. We are an IDE, yeah. We are not an observability tool, but you can integrate with an observability tool. And we are not going to make a decision out of automating that, but we can always integrate with an observability tool. So the starting point is from where you are observing the problem. So from there, you can actually ask more questions and you know, add more context. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Vino. That's a great demo. Uh, how do you create the JIRA tickets right now? And do you, are, you, are you using autonomous agents or anything like that? Or do you have plans, of, plans to use them? Uh, we don't have the agents. It's a simple uh, API integration. Yeah, yeah thanks. <clears throat> so I think we have run out of time. If there is one more question, we can take it. Otherwise, please give a hand to Vinod. This great demo and great presentation. Thank you. Thank you.